What's up, s'mores? I'm Shannon Morris. Welcome to the second episode of Snubs on Security, or SOS for short. This is the show where I spill the tea and I share my caffeinated opinions on all things cybersecurity and hacking. You have been asking for it. I have seen your comments, so it is time to give you my take on security and privacy news. This episode of SOS is sponsored by Delete Me, one of my favorite privacy companies. You can grab my 20% off deal at the link down below and learn more in just a little bit. Now we've got some really interesting news happening this month and pretty concerning issues, honestly. So stop playing with things. Just use the chapter markers down below to check out the stories that are of most interest to you, or you can just stick around for the whole video and some kitten cameos. Let's go ahead and get started. Now, what if I told you that a secret cell network, like a smartphone cell network hidden in plain sight, had the power to shut down New York City's entire cell phone service? That's 911 calls, text messages, even the very networks protecting world leaders. Yeah, that's exactly what the secret service just dismantled right before the UN General Assembly. So let me tell you a little bit more about this because the story is pretty wild. And I have some pictures that they have released publicly. Hello. So here's the scoop. Investors uncovered over 300 SIM servers packed with more than 100,000 SIM cards, all clustered within about 35 miles of the United Nations in Manhattan. Now, each of these servers was like a bank of fake phones. Honestly, if I saw that, my first reaction would probably be thinking about Pokemon Go because every single time I've seen a picture of somebody with multiple cell phones, it's usually had to do with Pokemon Go, but this was not. This is 100,000 SIM cards. That's ridiculous. But when you put them all together, you've got what's basically called a smishing super weapon. So this thing could flood cell phone towers with fake traffic. You could jam 911 calls. You could shut down emergency communications. You could even mask encrypted comms for criminals. My cat is currently staring at my preview monitor because she sees me moving around and she probably thinks it's a bug or something. So do not jump on the camera, please. Please don't do that. So you can mask encrypted communications for criminals. An official said that it had the ability to send 30 million text messages per minute. Yeah, per minute. That's a lot. So the timing of this is the critical part of the story. This takedown happened while nearly 150 world leaders were rolling into New York for the UN General Assembly. So imagine the chaos if motorcades were like gridlocking Manhattan and suddenly all of a sudden, nobody's cell phones worked. And while no credible plot to disrupt the UN assembly was specifically confirmed, the timing is pretty sus. And that's why they're thinking that it had to do with this specific event. So there's a special agent with a US government agency. His name is Special Agent Matt McCool. And sir, you have a very cool name, if I may say so. So Agent McCool, I just love your name. He heads the Secret Service's New York field office, and he explained it like this. He said, quote, it can take down cell phone towers. You can't text message. You can't use your cell phone. And if you coupled that with some sort of other event, like the UN General Assembly, it could be catastrophic to the city. Investigators think this network was not just some run of the mill thing that was created by some cyber criminals. Early analysis suggests nation state actors used it to send encrypted messages to cartels, terrorist organizations, and organized crime groups. Some experts told the New York Times that only a handful of countries even have the resources to pull this thing off. So they make mentions to Russia, China, or maybe Israel. And that's just reports. That's just what was written. And this was not just about denial of service attacks. Sim farms like these are notorious for smishing campaigns, which means you're sending fake texts that look like they are from your bank, your delivery service, service or even government officials, and it has been done before. Now the UK has already banned possession of SIM farms, which is so unfortunate for the Pokemon Go users. <laughs> Sorry guys. And I don't know if Pokemon Go would count as a legitimate reason to have a SIM farm, but yeah, the UK has banned it. But here in the US, enforcement is a lot murkier. And as Secret Service officials pointed out, it would be very naive to think this is the only network out there set up like this. If they built one in New York, what's 
stopping others from popping up in places like Chicago or LA or even DC. So the Secret Service may have shut down this particular network, but the bigger takeaway is this. The next generation of cyber threats are not just about like stealing your password and hacking into your credit cards or hacking into your bank. They're targeting the invisible infrastructure kind of behind the scenes that keeps cities running. So like our cell phone networks, our emergency lines, kind of our lifelines. Now data brokers depend on you just giving up. They bury delete my data buttons under mountains of legal jargon. They make links nearly invisible. And some even pull stunts like hiding opt out pages from Google. And I love a puzzle game. I mean, I love going into shrines on Zelda and playing through those. I have so much joy from solving puzzles all by myself, but not when my personal information is on the line. That's when it gets a little bit annoying. So here's the thing. Even if you know every single trick in the book, even if you go through and manually opt out, there's hundreds of sites and new ones are popping up constantly. That's where today's sponsor Delete Me saves the day. I actually signed up for Delete Me years ago as a paying customer long before they ever sponsored my channel, long before I started this channel because I didn't want data brokers basically doxing me. Delete Me's team does all the hard work. They go through these endless lists of brokers. They find where your personal data is hiding and then they get it removed. Not once, but all year long. So you don't have to play whack-a-mole with shady opt-out forms. Now, every few months you get a removal report that shows exactly where your data was found and proof that it's gone. And let me tell you, seeing those reports is one of the most satisfying parts of my privacy routine because I know my home address, my phone number, my family's details, they aren't being sold off to like spammers or scammers or stalkers. Cause yeah, I've totally experienced that in the past. So if you want the same peace of mind, or if you are tired of family members just saying like, I have nothing to hide right before their bank account gets drained, yeah, set them up with Delete Me. Just let it run in the background. Right now you can get 20% off just for being a part of my community. Head over to joindeleteme.com slash Morse code. Use the promo code SNUBS, that's S-N-U-B-S at checkout. It autofills when you go to my link too, so you don't even have to put in the coupon code manually. That's joindeleteme.com slash Morse code, promo code SNUBS for 20% off. Protect yourself from data broker dark patterns without wasting your weekends on white text on white background opt out forms. That's a thing. Thank you so much to delete me for sponsoring this video On to the next story. Okay. So what happens when the building blocks of the internet itself get hacked? Yeah, that happened. I'm talking about the very code that millions of apps rely on every single day. Well, this week, the JavaScript world got totally slammed by one of the most serious supply chain attacks that we have ever seen. And I love the name because I am very much a Dune fangirl. The name is a worm straight out of Dune. I should not laugh. This is a very serious story, but I just love the humor here. It's just great. So this is an NPM supply chain worm and it's codenamed Shai Halud. Yes. <laughs> Somebody named their infectious worm for this NPM supply chain attack based on the giant sandworms from Dune. It's Shai Halud. Only this one's not eating spice. It's actually just eating your credentials. I'm sorry, I'm not gonna laugh. Okay, so <laughs> here's what went down. Attackers compromised NPM maintainer accounts. In some cases, they just use something as simple as phishing emails disguised as NPM support. And they slipped malicious code into super popular packages like debug, chalk, ANSI styles, and there's dozens more. These libraries are not obscure either because they actually rack up billions of downloads every single week combined. And once those compromised packages go live, any developer that installed them could have unknowingly put malware right into their environment. Now, this is not just a one-off backdoor. The Shai Halud <laughs> malware behaves like a self-replicating worm. And here's how. First, it injects a malicious script called bundle.j into the affected packages. And then that script pulls down Truffle Hog, which is a legitimate secret scanning tool. Then it uses that against you. So it searches for GitHub tokens, NPM tokens, 
tokens, AWS keys, cloud credentials. Using that, it exfiltrates the stolen data to attacker controlled servers. And here's the kicker. It uses your compromised GitHub credentials to create malicious GitHub action workflows in your repos. So that means even future builds can re-trigger the infection. So every single infected maintainer account could unknowingly poison their own downstream packages, creating a cascading compromise across the entire ecosystem. Now, security researchers are calling this the first true self-propagating worm in NPM ecosystems. And over 500 NPM packages were impacted, including those tied to CrowdStrike's NPM account, which is crazy. There were secrets like GitHub tokens, NPM tokens, and those AWS keys that have already been exfiltrated. The malware can also send crypto transactions to attacker wallets. They could read, write APIs in the browser, and they can train assets silently. So supply chain attacks are not new. This is actually extremely popular when it comes to attacks, but they are getting nastier. So instead of hacking end users one by one, attackers are poisoning that factory floor the trusted packages and the dependencies that developers are using every day. And Shai Halud takes it a step further with automation and replication. So once it gets in, it doesn't need a human hacker babysitting it. It spreads autonomously through dependencies and build pipelines. So I have this friend, they work at Google, and this was a headache inducing problem that they had to deal with. And this is what folks like them are doing and they recommend. If you are a developer or running builds, audit your dependencies, check for any of those flagged packages, rotate all exposed secrets immediately. That includes NPM, GitHub, AWS, cloud tokens, enforce MFA everywhere. That's multi-factor authentication. Phishing maintainers was how this all started. So make sure you have MFA set up, especially if you can do pass keys or two-factor authentication in terms of a hardware token. That's way better. Pin package versions and use lock files to prevent sneaky updates from slipping in and keep an eye out for any kind of suspicious workflows in your GitHub slash workflows directory. This attack just shows how fragile our software supply chains really are. One phishing email, one compromised maintainer, and suddenly you got a whole worm capable of draining crypto wallets, stealing cloud secrets, and infecting half of the ecosystem. <gasps> Shai Halud, Lisa Al Gaib, Lisa Al Gaib. Sorry, I'm a nerd. Okay, so lastly, rumor has it that ICE just dropped three million dollars on tech that can break into your phone. Yeah, we are talking about Gray Key. Gray Key's been around for a long time. It's one of the most well-known phone hacking tools out there. So if that name sounds familiar, that's why. And this isn't their first time either. This is just the latest in a reportedly long shopping spree of surveillance gear. So let's talk about what that means for you. Here's the scoop. ISIS Homeland Security Investigations Unit, they're called HSI, they signed a new $3 million contract with Magnet Forensics. Now that is the company that owns GrayKey, which is a tool designed to unlock smartphones and extract all the juicy data inside of them, like text messages, photos, app data, cloud tokens, you name it, your phone gets owned. The contract says it's for recovering digital evidence, processing multiple devices, and generating forensic reports to support national security investigations. So the translation of this is HSI may want scalable phone hacking on demand. Now, GrayKey itself has been around since 2016, almost 10 years. Originally, it was built by a company called GrayShift. GrayShift is also pretty familiar if you've been following news about cybersecurity since then. Magnet Forensics actually merged merged with them in 2023 after a private equity firm called Thama or Tama Bravo scooped them up. And while ICE did not explicitly confirm Greyki in the documents, it's pretty obvious. So Greyki is basically a black box for law enforcement. You plug in a locked iPhone or Android, and after some time, you've got full access. It competes with Celebrite's UFED or UFED which you have probably heard about in other law enforcement contexts and other law enforcement stories. And this is not just that one-off. Federal procurement records show multiple recent contracts. 
So we've got $145,000 for Magnet GriffEye Enterprise, a forensics analysis platform. There was $90,000 for Graykey Premier Renewals in Detroit, $57,000 in licenses for digital evidence recovery, and $12,000 for more Magnet software in Charlotte. And last year, they actually spent $5 million on Graykey licenses alone. So I feel like I should drink some tea here. Because isn't this all just a little bit sus? ICE has a massive tech arsenal. They have Clearview AI for facial recognition, Paragon Spyware for phone surveillance, Palantir software for data analytics, and now Gray Key is added into the mix. And you're probably looking at a law enforcement agency with almost quite a bit of digital access, assuming the validity of this information. When reporters asked ICE if Gray Key was being used against migrants' phones, the agency declined to answer. Their spokesperson just gave the classic, we can't talk about investigative techniques, it puts officers at risk. So why should you care even if you're not under investigation? So in my opinion, once this kind of invasive tech is normalized inside of federal agencies, the scope of it can expand really quickly. Tools built for national security investigations can end up used in far more routine everyday cases. And unlike consumer privacy laws, contracts like these ones happen kind of in the shadows. They're discovered only because procurement databases are public information. That's a little messed up, just a little. Okay, I think I'm done here. If you like this new format and you wanna see me keep on ranting about security news with my own spin, my own opinions, hit that like button, make sure to subscribe, drop a comment, and let me know which of these stories really resonated with you. And until next time, stay safe, stay secure, and I'll see you soon. Bye y'all.